Okay, in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to deploy the remote physical leaf using the simple single pod fabric option. If you remember, we had two choices. I'm going to be using the simple method where I only have one pod and I will attach my remote leaves there. Now, I've got all of my details already uh, set aside and prepared for uh, where things are connected. I've got IP addresses that will be used by my layer three outs uh, and I've got some loopback set aside as well. I've got a, a remote leaf special tep pool set aside and I've written down the serial number of my remote leaf. Now, just a quick refresh of my topology. Here on the left, I've got my pod one home base. This is where all of my, my uh, configuration is. I'm gonna build a layer three out across my layer three WAN devices. I'm going to build a second layer three out for use by the remote leaf. And if everything works at the end of the video, I've got two virtual machines. I will connect them up and I will send some traffic across to validate my config. Now, let's take a quick look at the running config of my generic layer three WAN devices between all of this. Now, I'm using a Nexus device, but you could use any layer three device from any vendor that, that has what you need. So in my particular case, you can see here on the link towards the spine, I've got VLAN four, I've got my IP address, I've got OSPF running, I've done the same for the remote leaf and a quick uh, view of my generic OSPF config. Now, in ACI, uh, there's a certain set of steps to follow. Now, fortunately, there's a wizard and I'm going to use that wizard and take you through all of these steps one by one. Okay, let's have a look at the ACI side of the configuration. So I'm under the Fabric tab, Inventory, and one of the recent things that we added into the, the GUI is a number of new Quick Start wizards. So under Quick Start, under Node or Pod Setup, you can see that I've got some options, and here's the one for Remote Leaf, so let's go ahead and click into it and follow the wizard. Now the first thing we'll have to do is say which pod this Remote Leaf will belong to. Now in this case, I've only got one pod, so that's an easy answer. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up a special TEP pool for use by the remote leaves that differs from the TEP pool in my home pod. So you can see I've set up a single pool here in the 10.3.0 uh, range for use by my remote leaves. The next thing we need to do is set up the underlay route and this is just basically describing the networks that these layer three outs are going to use so that ACI understands. So as you can see here, I've set up uh, a few uh, definitions of my routes, one for the spines uh, and one for the links used by the remote leaf. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to pre-register uh, any remote leaf so that it becomes uh, recognizable and we can bring it into the fabric. So we'll click on the plus. I'm gonna give this a node ID of 105. I've written down the serial number and I can go ahead and paste that here. And then finally, we're going to give this a, a name and click update. The next thing we need to do is we need to set up the layer three out that's going to be used by the remote leaf. Notice I've set up a profile as OSPF point to point and I am using BFD. I am in area zero and I'm a regular area. Now let's go ahead and set up the router ID for the nodes. In this case, I selected node 105 from the pull down list. It was the only one there. I've got a, a loopback address that I've already pre-set aside for, for purposes of this remote leaf, and I've also made it the loopback address. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to set up the routed sub-interface for the remote leaf. As you can see in my example, I'm using interface 1 slash 49, and this is the IP address that we'll, we will assign to the remote leaf so that it can bring up its layer 3 connection. The last step that we have is setting up the layer 3 out for the spines towards the WAN routers. So let's do that. Again, choosing my profile. In my case, I'm using OSPF point-to-point -point networks. It is in area zero and it's a regular area. And let's set up the router ID for the spines. So I selected my spine from the pull-down menu and I've set up a loopback or router ID. Now let's go on and set the routed sub-interface for the spine to use to set up its layer three connection towards the generic WAN router. As you can see here, I've chosen Ethernet 1 slash 20 on my spine, and I've given it the proper IP address to connect and bring up OSPF. So then we'll click Finish. If we have a quick check of the Fabric membership view, we can see that our remote leaf has actually been found and registered by the Fabric. So we can see it's got its node name, its node ID. It's showing up as a role as of remote leaf, and we can see that it got a TEP IP address out of the pool that we set aside just for remote leaves. So what I'm going to do is in the background, I'm going to set up all the physical connectivity for a host connected to remote leaf five, get my VMs up and we'll see that they can pass traffic. 
No, what I haven't shown in the video is I've already set up a tenant, a VRF, a bridge domain, uh, and an EPG called EPGA. And if the, you look at the view of two members of EPGA, we can see that we've got two virtual machines. One is part of pod one and is on Leafs 101 and 102. And the other is on remote Leaf 105. They're both in the same EPGs, so no bothering with filters and contracts. Now, let's go ahead and check if they can actually ping each other. Before we go and test the ping, I want to point out one minor detail with regards to a bridge domain that's in use with Remote Leaf. So in the cases where you have a bridge domain that could exist at the home site and at, actually at the remote locations as well simultaneously, you want to go into the bridge domain configuration under Advanced Troubleshooting and you want to tick this box that says Optimize WAN Bandwidth. It is not on by default. And what this does is it assigns a different GIPO multicast address out of a special reserved range for use by Remote Leaf. So I'm into the consoles of both virtual machines. This particular virtual machine at 1.42 lives in pod 1. And this particular machine uh, at 1.22 lives in pod 2. So let's see if they can actually communicate with each other. And we can actually see that pings work from both directions. And connectivity is established. What I will do in the next video is I will take this and I will build it into a multipod scenario and I will take you through some of the differences and the, addition and the added configuration that we must do to make that work in a multipod scenario. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.